Welcome to the fourth episode of my podcast, where in this podcast we are going to look at the future of Formula One and who is the best non-European F1 driver excluding Senna and Fangio. Right, so guys, here we are for the fourth episode of the podcast, and we do have some different topics for today's podcast, but joining me again is Niblo, and how are you doing, mate? At, at 5am in the morning here in Australia, <laughs> I am doing splendid, thank you very much. <laughs> right, so now we'll go on to the first of some interesting topics that I have picked out, and the first one is basically the future of F1 with drivers, teams, the cars... How is F1 going to look in a few years' time? And first off, Nib, I'm going to start with the drivers and look at, say, the young drivers in F1 and what do we think they are going to be doing in, say, the next five or six years? And let's start with, say, the the top three young stars, I would say, Max Verstappen, Charles Leclerc and Esteban Ocon, I would say, right now. Verstappen, in my opinion, needs to get into a car that is good enough to win a title. And if he does go and win a title, I think he'll go and win plenty more after that. Leclerc, as we said in the previous podcast, it looks as though he is going to be driving for Ferrari in 2019. And if he does do well at Ferrari, he could be winning a title next year or in 2020. He could be winning a title very, very soon. For Ocon, though, it looks very, very bleak. We don't even know yet if he's going to be an F1 in 2019 or even after that. It's a very bleak situation, but I do think he will hang on to a seat for 2019. But Nib, for those three uh, drivers, what do you see for those drivers in terms of success, say, in the next five years? Do you think Verstappen and uh, Leclerc can win a world title? And for Ocon, do you think eventually somehow he can get into a winning car? With Max Verstappen, he's certainly the best out of those three at the moment. Closely followed by Ocon and then Leclerc for me. Even though I do rate Leclerc very highly, it's still his first season in Formula 1. And if he was put in a better car, maybe I could say that he's better than Esteban Ocon it's just because Ocon's been proving it for two years now that he is a high quality driver and almost a match for Sergio Perez and certainly has been more than a match this season so far for Sergio Perez with Max Verstappen I do see him staying at Red Bull however he could potentially go to Ferrari or Mercedes, depending on what happens with the future regulations, which we'll speak on a bit later, whether or not they're more engine related or whether or not they're more headed towards aerodynamics and ground effect, which Adrian Newey absolutely love, then he should stay at Red Bull. But we will see. And with Charles Leclerc, well, He's going to be a Ferrari driver next season, probably. Not confirmed yet, of course. But he can definitely win a world title, that's for sure. All three of these drivers have world champion quality within them. It will just be who has the best car, who can make the best decisions on track and not make mistakes like Mr. Vettel has so far this season. The other three young drivers which are going to play a massive part in the future of F1 as well, in my opinion, are Pierre Gasly, Lando Norris and George Russell. For Gasly, of course, he's going to Red Bull next season. I don't think he quite has world champion qualities, but of course, he could prove me massively wrong in 2019 and 2020 and so forth. Lando Norris... I I do fear for Norris because he is a very good driver, but I feel that already he is in the wrong car at the wrong time. And if McLaren don't get their act together, then we're not going to see Lando's, you know, what Lando can actually do in a car until maybe five years in to his F1 career. So I'm a bit worried for Lando Norris and for George Russell. Things for him also are not looking that good because... He's in kind of a similar situation to Ocon, but slightly worse in terms of trying to get a seat for 2019. I really do hope he gets a seat because he does deserve it, considering he is currently leading the F2 Championship. But Nib, 
with those three drivers, do you see any of those three in Gasly, Norris and Russell winning a title in F1? No, I don't I don't think so. For me, the most likely to win the title out of those three would be George Russell, who's displayed it this year in F2. What a good driver he is. And probably I rate him higher than Lando Norris. I think Norris is slightly overhyped, but he is a very good driver. There's no questioning that. But for me, Pierre Gasly is the more interesting one out of this. It'll be very interesting to see how he does up against a lot more tougher teammate in Max Verstappen, who we know is super, super quick and even quicker than Daniel Ricciardo in qualifying. And that's some feat because us Aussies, we're, we're pretty good at our qualifying, but for a Dutch, for a Dutchie to be beating an Aussie is very, very good. So it'll be interesting for Gasly because obviously this year he hasn't had the greatest opponent to come up against in qualifying. And sometimes Hartley hasn't been too far off him, but it's all about the consistency for Gasly. Can he put together consistent race weekends? And for me, that's his weakness at the moment. And if he ever wanted to win a world championship, that's what he'd have to do. So Pierre Gasly, now on to Lando Norris. He's had a good season in F2, but not as good as George Russell. He's kind of, he's kind of bottling the championship a little bit. I felt there's been a few times where he could have definitely won the race or got a better place finish, but he's kind of made a few mistakes. But it's only been his first year in F2, so there's a, going to be a steep learning curve for him next season, that's for sure. So it'll be quite interesting for both Lando Norris and George Russell I must say, I really wish that George Russell had a seat in Formula 1 next season because he is a proper driver. But sadly, that last Williams spot looks like it will be given to Esteban Ocon and not George Russell. So if George Russell wins the championship and then he has to sit out a year, could something like, could he go to Super Formula? Who knows? But it'll be quite interesting for those three, that's for sure. Let's also talk about Hamilton and Vettel and their future, say, in the next five years as well. For Hamilton, I think by 2021, he will be leaving F1 because by the time we get to that year, he may have eclipsed Michael Schumacher's championship record or even equaled it. So, you know, there might not be any point for Lewis to continue after Sebastian. I heard you saying this to me privately, Nib, is that you think Sebastian will stay in F1 until he beats his mentor Michael Schumacher's records and I agree but I'm not sure he is good enough to do that but for those two I think yeah say this time in five years time I wouldn't be surprised if both of them were retired. Yeah absolutely and that would be quite scary to think that only it seemed like a few years ago that Hamilton was the fresh kid on the block along with Sebastian Vettel and now they're like the two oldest drivers on the grid, along with obviously Kimi Raikkonen. But it's absolutely mental how quick these drivers have have just matured in front of our eyes. And for Sebastian Vettel, I have said that he's absolutely driven to beat Schumacher's record, or at least equal it with seven world titles. And I don't see him leaving F1 until he does that. He, a big part of that will have to be winning this year's title. But with Hamilton, I don't particularly see him staying beyond his current contract with Mercedes. I think that'll be it. He has some other interests in fashion and, and stuff like that. This, over the last few days, he's been in China with the fashion brand Tommy Hilfiger or whatever they're called. And he, that's something he's very interested in. And of course, he's... Uh, little short music career that he's had featuring in uh, Christina Aguilera's one of her recent songs. So Hamilton certainly has a lot of interest outside F1 and he would want to pursue that as quickly as he can. But it'll be interesting to see whether or not he does stay beyond 2021 or not. It depends a lot on the regulations, I believe. And these two great champions... It'll be a sad day when they both leave the sport. 
Now when it comes to the future of F1, let's move on to the teams and what I call the big five. Mercedes, Ferrari, Red Bull, Renault and McLaren. What do we think is going to happen with these teams going into the future? Now for me, for Mercedes, I don't think they will be you know, winning championships forever. I think eventually a team like Ferrari or maybe someone else like Renault will beat them and start winning titles as well. I think Mercedes will win the title this year and possibly next year. But, you know, once we get to 2021, 2022, Mercedes will not have enough of a car, I think, to go and win titles anymore. Ferrari, in terms of the progress they've made with the car in terms of its performance, they should, in a couple years' time, be dominating the sport. Because if you compare it to 2015, they were, what? half a second to three quarters of a second off the pace of the leading car and now in terms of pace you'd say that they are maybe a quarter of a second out in front as a lead car so given that progress Ferrari should have a dominant car in the future but of course with the way they're bottling it um, I don't know if Ferrari are going to actually dominate and win titles we'll have to see on that Red Bull, it's all down to Honda. If Honda get it right, I think Red Bull will be going for titles once again very, very soon. Renault, they've made a lot of progress since 2016. Can they make enough progress to start winning races? I honestly don't know. I really hope so. I think by 2020, they will be getting close to, you know, podiums consistently. I think they'll be getting close to that by the end of 2020 and going into 2021. And McLaren, I don't see them winning a race in the next three or four years. But Nib, out of those big five, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think a surprise team will start dominating the sport that we don't think it is uh, going to? No, I don't think we'll quite see a surprise like we did perhaps with Braun in 2009 or anything like that. Mercedes and Ferrari should still lead the pack in terms of pace with Ferrari just edging ahead with Red Bull then following behind. But quick shout out to Renault, of course, who over the last few years have improved their car massively. Ever since they got rid of Jolly and Palmer, it seems they've got a uh, they've they've made their car a lot quicker and better. So hopefully that means some good signs for Mr. Ricardo next season. Um But hopefully, Renault do make some progress next season because at the moment, I don't think Ricardo would be very happy sitting in a team which is fifth quickest realistically at the moment in in the grid. And they should be clearly fourth next season. I think that's their expectation and that's Ricardo's expectation and that they should be closing that gap on the top three. And with McLaren... Yeah, I 100% agree with you. I don't see them winning a race for the next five years or so. Now we're going to move on to a very interesting topic that me and Nib have had, you know, difficulty of actually choosing who we're going to choose for this topic. And it is, who is the best non-European F1 driver excluding Ayrton Senna and Juan Manuel Fangio? Now, the six drivers that we've kind of nailed it down to is Nelson Piquet, Rubens Barrichello, Felipe Massa, Mark Webber, Daniel Ricciardo and Jack Brabham. Now, Nib, I'm going to let you go first because it's such a hard decision to make. Yeah, this has been a very difficult choice for both Chazza and I over the past numerous days. And for me... It's Sir Jack Brabham with three Drivers World Championships. And I've purely gone for Jack Brabham because of the length and the age which he raced to. He raced in Formula One to he was 44 years of age, I believe. So that's quite an achievement. He is certainly the old day Fernando Alonso, who just kept going and going and got better and better with age. He quite possibly could have been a four-time world champion, but because he was so unselfish and gave his teammate the more reliable parts, uh, Danny Hume, or whatever his name is, 
the 1967 world champion, I believe. Yes, 1967. He gave him the world championship because he retired at two races at Monaco and the Belgium Grand Prix, which cost him the world title ultimately. But Sir Jack, he had a history in the Australian Air Force in World War II. He didn't he wasn't in active service, but he learned a lot of mechanic skills from working with the aeroplanes, and that certainly helped a lot in creating his own racing team and still today to be the only world champion with his name on the team. And that is some mean achievement. And for me, why I've given um, Sir Jack Brabham rating over uh, Nelson Piquet here is because Nelson Piquet didn't quite have the competition which Sir Jack Brabham had. For Sir Jack Brabham's 1966 world title, he had John Surtees, he had Graham Hill, he had those quality of drivers. And people put Graham Hill up there as one of the best of all time, certainly in the top 10. And the fact that he beat him in that season was was quite an achievement. And for me, that's why Sir Jack Brabham is the best non-European F1 driver outside of Fangio and Ayrton Senna. Yeah, I'm also going to go with Sir Jack Brabham as well for three reasons. One, because he built his own car in 1966 to win his third title. What an achievement that is. Also, when it comes to ranking him ahead of Nelson Piquet, the reason I rank him ahead of Piquet is because, again, the competition was very good. Also, another name to men- uh, mention is Jim Clark. To beat him... In that era, you had to be a very, very good racing driver, especially with Clark in that Lotus. And PK, the reason I don't go with him ahead of Brabham is because PK, when he was at Brabham, coincidentally, in the early 1980s, his teammates weren't that great. The competition in the nineteen in the early 1980s was not that good. You had Alan Jones and Reutemann and John Watson who were good racing drivers, but they weren't as good as Jim Clark and Graham Hill. No way in hell. Um, And I just don't think PK was as good of a driver as Jack Brabham was. I just don't think he was. So yeah, I'll go Jack Brabham, but also to give a shout out to Felipe Massa. I would go third with Felipe Massa because people forget how good he was before his accident. He should have won the 2008 title, he deserved it ahead of Lewis Hamilton, in my opinion. And I'm sure Nib shares that as well. And it might be a surprise to some people. But yeah, I'd say Massa is better than, or goes down better so far. Because obviously Daniel Ricciardo has not finished his career. But I would say Massa goes down better than Mark Webber, Barrichello and Daniel Ricciardo so far. So big up there to Felipe Massa. Right, so that's it for this podcast. And again, thank you to Nibblo. And next up is Singapore. And hopefully, again, as I said in the previous podcast, Singapore will be a good race and we'll have plenty of more talking points for the next podcast. But anyway, guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget, guys, I will be back tomorrow with the start of another series. As well, don't forget to join my Discord server. There's a link below down in the description. Also with my Twitter and my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video. And comment down below what did you think of the topics we discussed. Please comment down below what you think about those topics. And until next time, it's been me, Chazzer HD. Goodbye.